welcome to Myanmar Musings, a podcast of the Myanmar Research Centre at the Australian National University, Canberra. It's March 8, 2018, and today we are speaking with Thornini Zor, Senior Research Associate at the University of New England, about her master's thesis research undertaken through Yizin Agricultural University on traditional vegetable use. Hello, Thorny. Hello, Luke. So let's get into what traditional vegetables actually are. What makes a vegetable traditional and why are traditional vegetables important in Myanmar? Yeah, traditional vegetables are all category of plant. We can eat our leaf and fruit and roots and all set apart as a vegetable. But one of the things the difference between exotic and traditional one is um, they are just like a wine type and also growing as a weed and also as a uh, semi-cultivated or cultivated one, but um, the the crops are requiring a few input compared with the azote one. For the azote one, we need to use a lot of uh, pesticide and fertilizer and everything. But for the traditional one, it's just a natural, pure and like a organic vegetable because they are really adaptable in local and um, everything. We don't need to put a lot of effort or input in it. Now, the, uh, most of the people buy uh, vegetable from the supermarket, and they are uh, exoted when and they use a lot of input like a fertilizer and um, pesticide in the pesticide. So it's not a real organic one. So it is not good for the people health. Um, most of the people would like to have a vegetable in their meat every day, but uh, they did not aware about the pesticide and this residual effect. Because of this uh, traditional vegetable, they did not use the, this uh, inorganic pesticide and fertilizer. So it is more, to say, um, good value for the hygiene and also good benefit for the, for the people health. And then that's, uh, the nowadays some of the people are aware about this thing and they try to collect traditional vegetable in the market, local market. But one of the problems Problem. This is seasonal vegetable. We can't get all this the uh, vegetable in year round. So we can only find out in the local market, not in supermarket. And they have a lot of vitamin A and C and folic acid. Um, then exotic vegetable and also they are adapted to local ecological condition, require in minimum of cultivation and can be grown in home garden and also in the forest, so we can get easily there. Um, and also they give high heat within a short period, and also they are easy to harvest and preserve. Uh, local traditional vegetables have a great potential to improve human nutrition and at the least cost. And these resources are a value foundation for the development of new cultivar through traditional breeding and biotechnology too. That's a great description of what traditional vegetables are in, in Myanmar, and I can see that uh, a lot of research needs to be done on them. So what, what research has been done up till now on traditional vegetables? Yeah, when I start uh, my research, uh, there's, a, there's a very uh, rare literature, and I couldn't find in my li library, in my university, and also um, it is uh, very uh, difficult to get the resources from other countries. So, um, compared with exotic uh, vegetable, I can see many uh, documents and literature like uh, crop, cropping pattern and bosava practices and also growing practices, cultural practices, but not for the traditional vegetable. That's why I think um, I need to do this kind of research. And also, uh, as you know, because of the um, urbanization, that the traditional vegetables are decreasing, uh, disappearing day by day. And we have no um, the local knowledge about the use and management of these valuable resources. And even more pressing, we need to, be, we need to have uh, the system made a really good record for this because they are disappearing day by day. That's why I decided to do this uh, research. Um, for my thesis, master thesis. You undertook in-depth field work in one particular area of Myanmar. Why did you choose this area? And could you describe it for our listeners? Yes, I chose uh, Pimana Township uh, because Pimana Township was chosen 
uh, because they have the different temperature ranges, even in um, the same area, and also the different altitude and also soil fertility. Because you can see um, the eastern part of the Pimana, there has a mountain area. I did my research in there, so I can I get um, um, information uh, depending upon the altitude difference and temperature differences. So I choose this area. Of course, it is also close to uh, my university, um, and also Pimana area also. Um, um, located in transition as well. As I mentioned, like they had different uh, temperature and altitude, so I can get all variety of traditional vegetables even in one place. So, and also their living style. In this area, they have a Kayin and Kayin ethnic group staying there. Even though it is close to Nipido and Timana, some of the people are Kayin people. Their eating style and utilization is different with the Burmese people. And so I could learn differences between Bamis and the Kayin or Kayin ethnic people in this area. So I think it is a good, um, a good thing for me to do research in this area. And also because they have a many forest area, I can call it a lot of traditional vegetables from the forest. And also I can um, yeah record how they use this traditional vegetable as a food and also for medicine and purpose. Uh, it is a really a uh, high mountain area, and I I went 80 villages from this mountain area. On the southern part, it is very high, and we can't get easily in there. Even they have no road. We need to go there by foot or by motorbike, and of course, uh, it is not a good road, and we can fall down again and again. And we can see uh, many waterfall and also as like a wine type, and people are really like a wine people and some of the ethnic people, even they can speak uh, Myanmar language. So I need to use trans translator for, for interviewing these people. And also in the northern part, it is also very beautiful and also uh, the people, uh, Kayin people stay in there, in the southern part, Kayin people live in there. So in the northern part, it's, um, the ethnic people are very kind and very, um, polite and and it's really really um, great to go there and and also I I have a one memory that uh, one of the village my study village name is Salu and they said Salu Yi Tao or in Myanmar we say we have a saying like Salu Yi Tao now the car that's me when we drink a water from Salu village we have to come back in this village um, I think it is true I have been there for five times after doing my thesis because all of the people are very friendly and the villa is really beautiful and also there's a many traditional vegetables in there so yeah I really like it um, I really uh, recommend all the listener, listener to go there and visit this village I really recommend for that um, and also you can uh, learn their culture because it is their Kayin people. It's, it's not like a Kayin from Kayin state. They have another type of this Kayin culture. We can see it, we can learn from, from there and their living style. And their house also really good. Uh, the, the oral of the house made by wood from the tea, from the forest and uh, their um, house style is different with the Bami's house and also a bit different with from Timana downtown or Nipito. So we can see um, really, really uh, differences between the the oven type and this uh, look type. Um, and another good thing is that I can get fresh vegetables from the forest. So their eating style is they just only call it and picking uh, traditional vegetables from the forest in the morning and just come back and cook. So very fresh and very um, nutrition and when I when we eating that and also I try and I really like it when I eating the um, every time like breakfast and lunch and dinner they treat me a traditional vegetable it made me really really happy and it's really great when I eat them uh, the taste is really tasty and fresh and compared with the exotic vegetable 
the taste is really different from the exotic one when I bought in supermarket. This little village is not a big village. Uh, uh, the total household in this village is just only 34. So, um, yeah, it is a small village, and also all the villagers are adding as each other as a family member. And this village is close to the forest, and uh, so, yeah, they can get uh, easily traditional vegetables from the forest, and when they come back uh, from their, their fee or their land, they just pick and come back. After that, they just go and, yeah. So what kinds of vegetables are being grown and what are they used for in Salu? In Salu village, I found out um, 22 order and 34 family and 95 species. Uh, all these things are traditional vegetables in this area. Uh, according to my research, I found um, I study 18 villages from this Pimana area and a total of uh, 173 traditional species, 60 families, and 35 order were observed uh, and recorded in the my study fee. And out of these are uh, these species, 122 species were known species, and other 51 species are unknown species. So. We need to do more research on this kind of traditional uh, vegetable because most of these uh, species are unknown and underutilized species. Another thing uh, why I choose this uh, Pimana area uh, because uh, the availability of wine vegetable is decreasing mainly uh, due to increased population and rapid urbanization because of Nebido. And also there has no academic information regarding growing traditional vegetables, especially in this area too. According to my uh, research, uh, most of the traditional vegetables are uh, annual plants. So that means they are seasonal vegetables. So we can only cut in um, like a season. Um, so uh, in rainy season, we can call it most of the traditional vegetable, and because in this area, some of the most of the people need to buy some exotic vegetable in the winter and summer season. So and also we can uh, I found and also I find found out a narrow diversity of plant family was observed in lower altitude. This may be due to uh, more or less similar natural condition and less variety of ecological condition and or just only some of the adaptable cultivar can grow in this area. Why diamonds do you occur in the higher altitude? But when the elevation is 2,500 feet, uh, all our distribution of traditional vegetable will decline. And this may be related to low air temperature and possibly poor soil fertility. So, according to my research, according to the plant type, uh, vegetable in herbs grew uh, occupying the highest number and followed by the uh, tree type and the last one is shrub type. Regarding to the lifespan, um, yeah, annual lifespan we are mostly found and followed by perennial and the last one is the biennial. So the predominant nature of the annual herbs signify the seasonal availability of traditional vegetables which are in demand of systemic pre-harvest and post-harvest practices for sustainability of the production and accessibility. Um, and also I found out uh, very traditional and uh, underutilized species like uh, black ginger, we got ginette, and also mimbo u, that means mimbo pill, and, and also like uh, wine jackfruit, and also, um, and also like a chuka bidesi family, we call, uh, they call uh, to the kwa. Uh, like this kind of thing, you know, we fought, uh, I fought uh, many um, underutilized species, even I do not see in the past. It's the first time when I saw, saw uh, in this area. So let me give you um, an ASML about one of the traditional vegetables. We call um, chinette, it's like a blood ginger. 
so we can uh, cultivate as a as a nome nome uh, vegetable in their feed and also in the forest because the main edible part is their rhizome so after harvest uh, yeah the villager uh, eat as a fresh when they have a uh, spicy or something they can eat as a fresh one and together with uh, other vegetable as a fresh diet and also it is a uh, also good for the women so they cutting this blood ginger as the pieces and dip in in the their local alcohol and uh, they told me that it is re- good for the women uh, barrier uh, problem so yeah it is good for the uh, purification of the blood especially for the women so this kind of vegetable they can use as a vegetable and also for the medicine purpose for the growing practices, uh, most of the farmer or the villager using their their traditional practices, and as you know, traditional vegetable, uh, they can propagate easily from their plant part. It's like, a, for example, like a taro or kidney or yam. So they can use their plant part and grow it easily, uh, and so they don't need to buy from the shop. They just only store their their plant part or seed, and um, according to my research, most most of the farmer use uh, their their own seed. They propagate it by their own seed and do not buy any exotic one. But uh, when village or by some village, um, they would like to buy an exotic seed from the city, from the town like Timana, because they thought uh, it is uh, good for the high yield varieties or like a. Like um, be, um, because some of the because they they believe that most of the uh, consumer would like to buy this exotic one. Actually, it's not true. The consumer would like to have a traditional uh, vegetable because they feel it is more safe. Um, so and then we need to give this kind of knowledge to this farmer from this uh, area because they are a low educated person and they are. Um, so we need to give this kind of uh, knowledge to there. Of course, I gave this knowledge when I went this village and talk uh, how important this traditional vegetable it is. And also, they need to be aware how to conserve this kind of traditional vegetable. And also, to, to uh, we need to give some practices of the pre-harvest and post-harvest. Um, about this traditional vegetable because they are seasonal vegetable we can uh, we can um, preserve or, or we can store for a long time so they should know how to preserve this kind of traditional vegetable so they can use this uh, the preserve when in the summer or winter season they don't need to buy an ASO to one. Um, I would like to conclude uh, about my research. Of course, I'm doing many things, but I would like to conclude the main thing. Um, and uh, this Pimana area is a is a kind of rice pine, a large, large diversity of traditional vegetable species, and occupying the potential for crop improvement program. And and also this area can be a treasure for the fulfilling of the nutritional security for our country. Because it is located in transition zone, we can get a different variety of uh, uh, fra- vegetable from this area because of different altitude and different uh, temperature ranges. So we can grow in many uh, traditional vegetable in this area. And most of the traditional vegetables are endangered. So we, we really necessary to explore, explore for their genetic diversity. It is very important. I would like to recommend for that. Because of my research, I have no fan uh, and no support. I need to use my own money so I can't do it too much. And also because of time limitation um, for, for my research. I would like to do more deeply and I would like to recommend other people to use my uh, thesis as a foundation and also please do more research in this area, not only in this area, also around Myanmar because most of the uh, traditional or indigenous vegetables are endangered situation because of the 
uh, um, climate change and also because of urbanization. So they are decreasing day by day. So I would like to recommend this thing. So you undertook this research um, as an independent female, young female researcher in Myanmar. What challenges did you face in doing this fieldwork and what can be done to encourage more people like you to do research like this in the future? Today, of course, is International Women's Day. Yes, well, I have uh, yeah, many challenges for, for my uh, research. Of course, because of the gender balance and I'm a woman, so according to our tradition everybody worry about the women they don't want to let me go in the forest and call us this thing and also i need to stay overnight in this village um, because i need to interview them and also need to observe and call us all these vegetables from the forest uh, sometimes i need to stay two or three days in one village if now i do not get all this information so my professor and most of the teacher from my university worry about me and they they don't want uh, they didn't want me to go uh, and they did not give me a permission so i really uh, had a hard time to get this permission i need to say that i need to prove that i'm okay then i will i will be safe so it is one of the challenges if there's a man he will be easy to get this permission. For me, I need to um, struggle, struggle to get this permission. And also, of course, when I uh, went to this story area, it is very difficult to go there. I can go alone because of my security and also I'm a woman. So I need to take uh, mm, my friends to accompany with me. And sometimes uh, they, they are happy to help me. Sometimes, of course, they also have uh, their uh, study and their free work. At that time, I have a really big problem because I can go there. And I would like to give some suggestion to another young researcher. Even though it is a hard time to get a permission or to get this agreement, they should not stop and keep trying because I did it. I did it, they gave me a permission finally. Uh, and don't afraid to stay in this forest or in the, this uh, village. So they, they <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to encourage the young researcher, just keep trying. You will get a good um, advantages from this thing because um, because of this research, uh, I train a lot, even in my mindset. And also, I learned a lot from this culture and, and all these things. Uh, in the beginning, I would like to get up very easily. After doing this research, um, I'm more stronger than the past. And I, can't, I did not get, get up easily like the past. Um, and one of the suggestions I would like to give the professor, they need to allow the young researcher, what they would like to do. If not, we were doing unfair research in near university or in the city. Nobody go, don't want to go in this kind of uh, isolated area or yeah, in this kind of village. So we will not get uh, good information from that. They should allow what they would like to do in this kind of isolated area too. And yeah, and. It is because of our culture, uh, everybody worry about their student too much and they are adult people, now they can handle all these things and they should give some permission to do this kind of research for the young researcher. Fantastic. All right. Now, the last question is always recommendations. So, Thorny, could you please recommend to our listeners something to do with Myanmar? Okay. So I will recommend my hometown, Tadao. Um, so, and also we call Inwa. It is like an Asian city. So it's like a backend. You can see many Asian pagoda and also uh, Asian monastery. It's all made by teeth, a big one. So it is really fantastic and you will be amazed when you are there. So I would like to recommend uh, Inwa, my hometown, and 
and it was located beside the Eyre River. You can see the river view, and also you can see the historic places. So I would like to recommend this area, my area. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for being on Myanmar Musings, Tony. Okay, thank you uh, for interviewing. <laughs>